This is Fintech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life. Today, we will journey into an innovative place for people who have made different choices in life and now want to make the change in their lives. Ho'omao Keoa is a wonderful, magical place out in the Waianae Coast, and it offers services for adults, 18 and older, who are seeking help and treatment for chemical dependence. Although Ho'omao Keoa facilities are located only in Waianae, the services are open to chemically dependent individuals of any Hawaiian island who are willing to come to the Waianae Coast for such services. Priority, of course, is given to pregnant women, IV drug users, and homeless individuals. And one of the, uh, what shall I say, movers and shakers and, I, I'm lost for a word, and that's my dear friend, Ross Kamakahi. Ross, as the name implies, is Native Hawaiian, has been all over the world, traveled everywhere. He's uh, got a JD, a master's in business administration, and has a, he's built kayaks and airplanes and has done everything. And so he now comes home to be the rudder in this wonderful program. So tell me, tell me, Ross, tell me all about you first with a name like Kamakahi. That sounds familiar. Well, thank you, Marcia. And aloha kakiaka. Uh, actually, I did a, most of my education abroad, uh, but my high school years I did at Leilahua High School. Mm -hmm. Uh, public education, and then I did undergrad and, and graduate school later on when I was a little more mature. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the essence of me now in my later years is to contribute uh, back to society in a format where I can assist uh, the, that population which uh, I come emanate from, and uh, and the need exists. Well, now, many years ago, I don't know how many years, you told me, and I hope this is okay. Uh, Ross, of course, like everybody of his age, was in Vietnam. Yes. And he suffered with uh, what is that horrible disease? That Agent Orange. Agent Orange. So he tells me that he had Agent Orange and he was going to die. So he decided to come home to die. And instead of dying, he's living and he's been living. So that tells you about coming home to your roots, come back to your people, back to local foods, and, and steering this wonderful program. Well, I'm just helping the steer, <laughs> steer. And the steer, of course, is uh, Dr. Patty, Patty. Isaacs. Yeah, she is the executive a, director. She yeah. is a wonderful, wonderful person. So let's talk about this innovative. What makes it? What makes this program, innovative substance abuse treatment and recovery, cultural based? So what makes this different from all the other programs we hear about? I think two things in particular separate us. Mm -hmm. probably from the, the status quo. And that one, the first one is the culture weave. Uh, Dr. Patty, through research and uh, honoring kupuna, mm -hmm. uh, has kind of woven cultural practices and best Western practice uh, together to form what she calls the cultural the weave the Ho'omaukeola weave. And 
it's a combination of values, morals, on the culture side, and not necessarily only culture from Hawaiian culture, but culture in general. So, uh, as you stated earlier, we we take uh, clients, what we call haumana, from across the state, but even from the mainland. Oh, and, really? Yes, indeed. Uh, and those are telltale stories from as far as Rhode Island um, all the way to the West Coast. So, and we have some with us today in, in our current uh, well, class. Now, I have heard that you are ranked number one in, in the state in what you do. Yes. So, now this is what, a nine, nine month, is that correct? Nine month program from beginning to end, a person goes through all the different steps. Is that correct? Yes, currently uh, the research, according to Dr. Patty and, and what she's yes. uh, researched in the past and currently, the longer you're in the program, the more effective the outcomes would be. I would think so. And some facilities or programs are, have very short windows of uh, engagement or program. And often that becomes a revolving door. And eventually they'll either go to Ho'omau or San Island, which is the most restrictive program. But there's a need for that because some, some clients need that uh, regiment, you know, that, that style of uh, treatment. Uh, our outcomes, the success of our outcomes, come not only from the we that I mentioned earlier, but it, we're an Aina-based program. And we have uh, over 1,100 acres in Waianae Valley. Wow. Yes. And our haumana, our clients, are up on the Aina uh, for treatment. Monday, Monday through Friday without Thursday, and Thursday we have uh, workshops, mm -hmm. uh, some culture, some educational, some workforce development on the, that day. So when you say they're on the Aina, do they work the land? Is what, how, what, tell me what that means when they're on the Aina. Well, sometimes we have uh, kupuna that come, mm -hmm. And uh, and talk talk story have talk story sessions mm -hmm. with the hamana. Uh, sometimes we have kupuna that volunteer to come up and kana kapila, which is ukulele mm -hmm. and singing, and the hamana join in, in that uh, mm -hmm. session with them and sing and play instruments and dance. Oh, well, I've seen them dance now. Yes. They, they're wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we've expanded that at the whole Mount Keola to do uh, public appearances. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're volunteering to do so, and and uh, currently we we have a partnership with uh, the Hyatt Hotel in yeah. Waikiki. Very good. Yes, and uh, and it's just an amazing amazing transformation when uh, both the community, the kupuna, and the haumana, the clients, gel because they get, to, they get a taste, touch, and uh, immersion into uh, now a, a, clean, a clean world. So does this build confidence in, in a world that they didn't see before is that what happens this transformation absolutely you know there their stories that they have for themselves um, aren't you aren't really unique mm -hmm. a lot of the population out there has they go through trials and tribulations whatever that may be uh, and the struggle the human struggle is hard enough without it yes but uh, it's just amazing if you if you see them in the the first stage of hala, which means rough, right? right, and go all the way to graduation. 
it just it's just amazing and you can see it progress uh, through the different stages now you have different stages yes so how did how are they housed where how do you separate the the um, new newbies the new people from the second stage and the third stage where where are they housed okay we we have a uh, we actually just recently separated by gender. Uh, we put all the men under one leader, our Kani manager. And he's responsible for all the Kani, the men, mm -hmm. from entry, which is the HALA, the residential stage, the TLP, therapeutic living program, clean and sober. And then starting in October, it will be recovery home, which will extend our program adding more time to it. Um, the women are in a separate house. Uh, we have a front house and a back house. And the residential part um, is in the front house of a, of a property in Waianae. And we have a Wahine manager who is responsible for all the women mm -hmm. throughout the program, all the way from the residential we don't have a, a therapy living program as of this moment, but we're always looking for the opportunity. And then the clean and sober, and then starting October 1, we'll have a recovery home. So do you, do you ever go out of the facility outreach, or is, are you confined to having people come to you? We actually, um, because we serve the homeless, yes. right? It's one of our priorities. We don't, we, we can't, if we're serving them, we can't really wait for them to come to us. Mm -hmm. We have, we have fevers out and we have people just looking for uh, those that we can assist uh -huh. and they do outreach. And then through outreach or referrals, uh, they, they come into our program. What, now we have to uh, take a break. And we'll be back in one minute and then tell us all the other wonderful things, especially more about the Aina. Thank okay? you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Aloha, and we're back with my dear friend, my new best friend, Ross Kamakahi, from this wonderful, wonderful Ho'omau Ola. And it is a an innovative substance abuse treatment and recovery facility. And he was just telling me that they have a thousand acres on the Aina, up in in Waianae Valley. Just fabulous, lovely, lovely. And it just feels so good. Back as you go up the mountains and with the stream running through and just old Hawaii, really old Hawaii. Now, of course, that does something to me, but what about your clients? Do they feel that, that the magic of that location, or is this different? I think the, it's a learning, learning process for them mm -hmm. at the beginning, yeah. because they, they're working out the roughness. Yes. But um, there's some transformation that occurs probably after the first 30 days of, of program, mm -hmm. 
and continues throughout where they love to go up there. Um, you know, they, they work hard in the morning until noonish, noon, one o'clock, and then they're able to go canoeing, uh, you know, uh, what a life. Paddling, <laughs> paddling at Pokai Bay. Now that's or, hard work. Paddling is hard work. Well, I don't. It's well, in maybe the ocean. They, yes, yes. So they get they get wet and mm -hmm. and they get to do something. I guess what they would call fun, but they look forward to that. And even our um, a member of our board, she she heads that program. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as she volunteers, skippering the the canoes and teaching teaching how the, how to the so. In, and teaching about the canoes, about how they're made and the history of the canoe and all of that, <clears throat> because that's part of the canoe is, is learning the about history. the history yes. of the canoe. And, and safety how it, and yeah. how to paddle, mm -hmm. which helps them in the teamwork. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's just, it enhances their learning experience. So is that part of the therapeutic living it's part of the, the treatment. The treatment, yeah. All the way through, because our residential program uh, paddles on Fridays, mm -hmm. and our outpatient paddles on Mondays. So, what of you mentioned that you have um, other people, Kupuna, come in for different classes? What, uh, Ross? Tell me, what else do they? do? What other classes do they have? Well, we, we brought in many uh, of various types. Uh, we, uh, Uncle Eddie Akama, uh, the Royal Order, yes, uh, has done uh, Meli, through mm -hmm. Meli, through mm -hmm. sing songs and ukulele. Uh, and he's very good at place. So he'd ask the Hawana, oh, where are you from? And say, Lihui, Kauai. And then he'll play a song of that place, oh. you know, and, and and inform, educate the Halmana of the melody that belongs to the place. So does he do storytelling? Because yes, Waianae Valley is just full of stories. We have uh, Uncle Glenn Kila, who's the uh, uh, the kahu of that valley. Oh, so his family has been there since since inhabited mm -hmm. and he has uh, Kuleana over Punanaula which is the name of that area and so he when he comes aboard he talks about place uh, uh, specifically of the Aina and it's just it's magical I yes. mean it's just, and it's first source mm -hmm. so the information he's giving is it's, it's real, yes. Yeah. Yes, very yes. Well, real. So now they're learning and they're working, and so that works out some of the stress and and gets rid of the whatever they were addicted to. Yes. So what happens is, we we grow, we plant, we harvest uh, fruits, vegetables, flowers, a uh, mamaki tea garden. That's we have three three trees donated by another kupuna, our Dr. Patty spiritual uh, guide, uh, Uncle Helemano. Oh, yes. Yes. He made, for me, the most beautiful rose, because my name is Marsha Rose. Yes. He made this gorgeous rose. I, I don't know, it it's, looks like silk, but it's made of feathers. Yes. Yes. He's a, a Kahili uh, kumu, he's, so he's a Kahili master. Oh, and, just gorgeous. And yes. he, he even teaches the Hamana how to not only make the Kahili, the history behind it, the uh, cultural relativeness, and how to repair pre existing. You know, like do modifications to mm -hmm. it to update it or. Yes. And so uh, when they, now they're, they're growing through this, and you said this is nine months. Yes. So they process and keep moving and keep moving. Um, do you have, what am I trying to say? Ross, help me here. When they graduate, 
do you have a follow-up, a way to keep them connected? What, what is the next step after graduation? Yes, what we do is we, we for grant purposes, um, we track mm -hmm. uh, six months follow-up after that to ascertain um, if they've had any emergency hospital stays, uh, if, they're if they're employed or going to school, or what they're, what they're doing at the end of the six months. And uh, our outcomes are great on that. Uh, we are looking to bolster that now with uh, another partnership with uh, another gentleman and, uh, and his, in his organization to do our workforce development. Uh -huh. And uh, that's still, we're trying to rough out that part, but once that's in, uh, in place and moving, we'll complete, we'll be a more complete agency with even greater outcomes than the, the ones we're having now. What, um, what about the, Ross, what about the families of the clients? How do they, I, I, I don't think you send a person back after they've been through all this to an environment where they first got started with this chemical dependence. What, what happens now? What about the family that they came from? Do, how do you help the family? Or, okay. or do you? Well, one of the things we try to do is family reunification. Mm -hmm. And that comes in many different forms because when they're in program, when they're in treatment, they, they're forming new relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're with that, they're with that group as long as they're in program. And so when they join our program, Ho'omauke Oma, they're a member of our family. So they're welcome to come back. And many do. Many stay connected to us and work the aina. Mm -hmm. Or come back as a council, as a, as a CA, a counselor's aide, or better. And it wouldn't, it's not unusual. Uh, we, you know, we have, we have some job opportunities that um, the ones, the recent graduates uh, can partake in if they, if they feel like doing it or want to do that. And that's working on the, on the farm itself. Well, what I was going with that was the families that they left behind. How do you incorporate, let's suppose somebody was married and has children, how do you incorporate that existing family with the new family? Or yes. do you? Well, we have once a week, uh, while they're in the residential stage, mm -hmm. we, they have family day. We, we try to work on the family reunification once, the, uh, once they begin their healing process. Uh, and that's usually a Saturday or Sunday, or if we're doing a community project at a shopping center or the hotel, mm -hmm. we, we offer an invitation to them to invite a family member or to, to attend to, so they can see the progress they're making, the, the change in the demeanor. And until later on is when they're further on in their treatment, at which time we do more of a focus. We invite them up to top story sessions to on the Aina because that's a perfect place. We have yeah. children who are, who are CPS um, controlled who meet with their mothers on the Aina, and we have parents who come from Waimanalo to visit their daughter or the or their son. We have wives who visit their husbands or fiancés up on the Aina and and on like family days, as I mentioned. But it's we 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 try to exhaust all opportunity to re reunify the family, and uh, I think we're getting better at. It. <laughs> of course. Yes. How how old is this facility? How long have you been in business? Well, Ho'omaukeola started 
a little over 30 years ago. 30? Yes, and it was called the Hawaii Addiction Center at that time. Um, and then they changed the name, they had a name change shortly thereafter to occur into Ho'omakewoma. And uh, yeah, so we've been in existence over 30 years, 501c3. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, by the way, on October 8th, we're having our second annual fundraiser at Mamikuhanua. Okay. Uh, the Sunday. So that's just a plug for the That's program. a plug, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, you'll call, come back and remind us before then? Yes, I'll probably ask Dr. Patty to come. So. Okay. Now, she doesn't look old enough to be A, Dr. Patty, and B, to even do this. But she's such a wonderful human being, Dr. Patty Isaacs. For those of you that probably don't know who we're talking about, Dr. Patty Isaacs is a beautiful woman. Um, she even though she's not Hawaiian, you wouldn't think so the way she dances at the hula yes. and she's just just perfect. So yes, we will invite. In fact, I tell her that she's really more Hawaiian well, than yes, me. Yes. You know, more <laughs> culturally adept than I am. Because her her dissertation was Aloha Aina. Uh -huh. And she believes in the Aina, the land, healing. Mm -hmm. Healing the Haumana, healing people you know, working the land. Well, she's, she is such such a beautiful human being. And yes, we want her to come back. And you also. And what day is the 8th on? Sunday. October? Yeah. Jay, can we take a camera out? I hope so. So we can come see and visit with you. Is, yes. that, is that okay? Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Ross. Again, it's always a pleasure to spend time with you. And aloha, and we will see you next week. Aloha. There you are.